Assalamu alaikum. This podcast has been brought to you by Seekers Guidance, the global Islamic seminary. Help us spread the light of prophetic guidance to millions around the world by becoming a monthly supporter. Make a small donation at seekersguidance.org slash donate. As little as $10 a month can help people find life-changing guidance. I find myself feeling empty whenever I try to do something for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and only motivated when doing things for selfish or immediate reasons. When trying to fix this and reset my intention, I end up just sitting there for a long time trying to find whatever emotion to <coughs> spark uh, or, or spark that is missing. Uh, a lot of the time gets wasted. I would appreciate any advice on how to reconnect with our purpose and intention and actually feel motivated through the study or work, whatever one is doing. So. When, if one is struggling to have high intentions, they say one of the, the most facilitative means is to be with sincere people, be with true people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that, O oh, you believe, have taqwa of Allah, be conscious of Allah, and be with those who are true. And they say, Wallahi ma aflaha man aflah illa that by Allah, no, no one succeeded of those who succeeded except by the company of those who succeeded. So they mentioned that, you know, a dog who kept good company ended up getting mentioned in the Quran, the dog of the people of the cave. They were good youth, the dog just happened to be with them. But do, the dog gets mentioned in the Quran. So this is part of it, is that if you keep the company of those who are sincere, those who have high intentions, who are motivated, you'll find yourself directed towards that kind of motivation yourself. It facilitates. So that's one thing, it's company. The second is an important and often neglected sunnah, which is to consult. Right? To consult. And sometimes consulting is heavy on the nafs. So you've got, you've got a new project, etc. So sometimes it's kind of obvious. Why sh what should my intention be in this? You know it should be for the sake of Allah. But you have ulterior motives, you have many things that cross your mind, etc. But one of the things that is an important prophetic teaching, right? and it's from the way, it's an important sunnah, and it's from the way of the righteous and of the people of success, is that they consult even about things that would be obvious. So what should I intend in starting my business? Obviously you intend to seek the pleasure of Allah. But then how, right? And, intent, and the, these intentions are facilitative keys. And sometimes we make our intentions too abstract, for example. And the ulama, part of consulting is one approaches, it with, approaches the matter with humility. And there's blessing in it because the person you consult, the, their concern for you will get reflected in openings of benefit. They'll likely make dua for you. But also, they'll give you practical advice of how to have a nuanced intention. One of the keys to making good intentions, and there's a beautiful work by Habib Saad al-Aidarus called The Book of Intentions. This was translated, Kitabun Niyat, and this translated into English. That there are, that think, think not only of the ultimate intention, which is purely for the sake of Lillahi Rabbil Alameen, for the sake of Allah. But the ulama emphasize the derivative intentions, which is called you know, niyat, having multiple intentions, because these are the expressions, how will I seek the pleasure of Allah? So think of all the little practical things, and even things that could be selfish motivations. You want to start a business because I want to make money. Nothing wrong with that if you do it for the right intention. So I want to seek the pleasure of Allah through starting this company so I have money to spend. How? On what? So I can spend some extra on my family so that I can give some financial assistance to my parents so that I can give in charity so that I can partake of some of the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of gratitude to Him. And the Prophet ﷺ said, إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبْ أَن يَرَى أَثَرَ نِعْمَتَهُ عَلَىٰ عَبْدِهِ أَثَرَ نِعْمَتِهِ عَلَىٰ عَبْدِهِ That Allah loves to see the traces of His blessings upon His servant. So even sometimes some of the selfish, worldly intentions, nothing of this world that is done 
in a manner that is good, seeking God thereby is actually worldly. So all permissible worldly intentions. Right? So you want to be successful. Okay, that's why the benefit, if you consult the ulama, they'll say one of the ways to have a good intention in being successful is that you want to be successful for the sake of Allah because Allah loves excellence. You want to be successful so you can be of more benefit to Allah's creation. You want to be successful so that you can bring happiness to the heart of your parents, to make your parents happy, which is a good intention. You want to be successful so you have, so you can help more people who work for you, right? which is a noble intention. So it contextualizes, right? it contextualizes. Um, so in short, number one, keep good company. Good company inspires. Number two, consult about the intentions. Number three, work on having multiple intentions how you will seek the pleasure of Allah and reframe all your worldly inclinations as means of seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? Um, and fourth, make a lot of dua. Because say, a dua yajma'u al humub. Dua gathers one's concerns. Right? So make dua, oh Allah, I ask you that you grant me sincerity. Oh Allah, and you keep asking, and this is a way of nurturing sincerity, is to ask and pour your heart out. And then the bigger picture is to do two things that are knowledge related with respect to intentions. One is always, re always connect with the teachings of the Prophet Wasallam. So when it comes to intention, for example, connect with the guidance of the Prophet Sallallahu with respect to sincerity and intentions. And a beautiful place, that one of the most comprehensive books when it comes to prophetic teachings that everyone should strive to have is Imam Nawawi's wonderful work, Riyadu Salihin, The Gardens of the Righteous. The second thing, and that's a, a book that any virtue that you're thinking about, connect there and you'll see the key Quranic verses, the key hadiths of the Prophet ﷺ related to it. And finally, when we talk about spirituality, the spirituality that we seek is a practical spirituality that enables us to bring the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ in our lives. And two books that any believer should have in their basic library that relate to this, first is the beginning of guidance by Imam Al-Ghazali. That the first step, like how do you seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala practically in your life? Right? And all these kinds of fundamental questions he will address. And the second book of practical spirituality, of how you operationalize the sunnah outwardly and inwardly, in your actions and in your heart is Imam Al-Haddad's work, the Book of Assistance, Risalatul Mu'awana, which is very practical because each chapter begins with practical advice. And there's a wonderful chapter on sincerity, for example, which will give you a practical, deep, rich, inspiring but very realizable uh, roadmap of how to acquire this quality of sincerity. Thank you for listening. This podcast was brought to you by Seekers Guidance, the global Islamic seminary. Visit SeekersGuidance.org to access reliable Islamic knowledge taught by qualified teachers. We offer a wide range of courses, podcasts, articles, and a world-class answer service. Support us in spreading free, reliable Islamic knowledge to millions around the world by becoming a monthly supporter. Visit SeekersGuidance.org slash donate and make a small monthly commitment today. Our beloved Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Whoever guides someone to goodness will have a similar reward. So don't forget to share this podcast and spread prophetic guidance.